computer. All right. Okay. And now we need to go back. Screen share. Screen share. OK. So I believe we are recording at the moment. And we are going to go to this mode. So friends, from here, we are Dolores, I, oh, or I'm doing the next one, sorry. We you're, are here. It says that maybe you hit continue because there's a, it's blocking. There's a message. The meeting is being recorded. OK, so I'm going to see if I can. Um, it looks OK on my screen. OK. It so says my thing. Okay. Every individual is asked if they will continue while it's being recorded and every individual must answer that question. Yeah. So so okay. it's on it shows on every individual. So it's recording, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So friends, um, to honor our spirits, we chose a beautiful song called Unite by Ali Yousafi. It was a difficult decision because there are beautiful um, ways to honor our spirit um and also different version of this song so um we chose this because it has to do with unity and also um oneness of humankind being um the first fundamental prerequisite to unity really that's what the uh, baha'i faith proposes and considering ourselves as a member of one human family. And many people around the world right now think the same mm -hmm. so that they are member of one human family. So it's a, it's a mindset that uh, we need to cultivate, we need to develop, we need to practice. <laughs> so with that, we will uh, honor our spirit with this beautiful song. And let's see what happened here. And I'm going to do this. Let's Want to build a code? Build a complicated tag? Then you need Kajabi, okay, the powerful all in one platform. That. That's better. Space is 
hang on my technical mm -hmm. um so we need to now bring this back oh yeah what am i doing go share, share yes. screen yes yes i'm trying to go start share i think and go back to sharing our slides here. Nope, just be patient with me here. Okay, we will need to share the screen first. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dolores. So, I'm glad you're doing it and not me. <laughs> well, somebody has to do it. Yeah. Uh, um, friends, we uh, hope that you enjoyed. Sorry, my screen is acting up here. You enjoyed the song uh, and the different, really, diversity of human being like the flowers of one garden really adds to the beauty of the garden. And uh, a lot of lovely houses of worship and mosques and church and it, they, it was, it was, I think it's beautifully made. So that's me. And with that, we go to Dear Dolores. Well, so thank you, Farah. Thanks. And I, I always love that song, but it has a different, uh, you know, the different rendition with the, the peoples of the world was wonderful. Um, Kathy Merchant, when she arrived, uh, when she logged in, said, is this, is this a second workshop? And it's true. I wanted to give some background before we look at this uh, Virtues card, Virtues Project card. Uh, back at, uh, in February for World Interfaith Harmony Week, Farah and I did uh, a workshop on unity there. 
And it was wonderful during that uh, workshop. There were some comments and uh, Sherry Marcel was there. I think she may have given one of the comments that it would be wonderful to have another workshop and bring people, more people into the circle of unity. I thought that was just fantastic. So Farah and I said, yes, we, we would love to do this, but this time maybe going a little bit further and exploring some tools, um, how to move together on that path towards unity. So in order for us to have a collective understanding of unity, we thought uh, before we proceed with any more of the program, we could read from the Virtues Project card on unity. And that will allow us to have a focus for our theme tonight. But before I ask for a volunteer to do that, I'm going to ask Farah, who is, in my estimation, steeped in the Virtues Project, to speak just a little bit about what it is and the importance of it. Thank you, Farah. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> no, dear Dolores. Uh, I don't know how steep I am, but just a little bit of history that mm. the people who created this Virtues Project International, um, Dan and Linda Popov, Kavlin Popov, and Brother John Kavlin, and they used to live in Salt Spring Island. And it was around 1990 when they really officially introduced this to everyone. And they have written books, they have developed many cards, uh, and they have also what they have done, they have um, researched the mm -hmm. sacred scriptures of all religions and traditions, mm -hmm. including their First Nations tradition. And they have come up with at least 350 that we share and shared by all cultures mm -hmm. and all religions, people of religions and people of faith and no faith. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a which so rituals are really international. It is universal positive qualities of our character. Mm -hmm. So such as you know, this is unity, patience, uh, justice, understanding, um, helpfulness, just name it, 350. And these cards are, you know, if you want at the end, I can give you the website that you can go download the cards only for $1.99. You can also buy, buy it physically. So I can do that. And what else I can say about that? Uh, the one thing that because it's universal, the reason is universal is that we all have them in us, every single person. And, but we need to wake them up. <laughs> so we have them in potential, but we need to wake them up. And, um, and really these, these are the qualities of character, mm -hmm. uh, the inner attributes that we, all cultures share and um, that's what defines us these you know these qualities of character mm -hmm. so uh, they're not easy to practice I have to admit none of them are but we are all striving so I can't say more but I think Dolores wants to <laughs> we need to move on so dear <laughs> Dolores back to you my friend thank you I, I always learn Yes, lots from when you speak about the Virtues Project, it's something different and new each time. So I'm going to ask for volunteers. as I said, this will help us focus and move forward um, into our program uh, to have a collective understanding. Would someone be uh, use the inner quality of strength of, of courage <laughs> to be able to read our uh, to both sides to the unity um, virtues card? Farah, can you make it a bit bigger? Yes, yes. Thank you. Anyone come forward to be able to, to read? Just unmute and read, please. Thank you so much. I can read it. Thank you so much. Unity. Unity is a powerful virtue and it brings great strength. Unity is inclusiveness. It brings people together. We see our commonality without devaluing our differences. We experience our connectedness with all people and all life. 
Unity frees us from the divisiveness of prejudice and heals our fears. We refuse to engage in conflict, seeking peace in all circumstances. Unity comes when we value every person in our family or in our world. The joy of one is the joy of all. The hurt of one is the hurt of all. The honor of one is the honor of all. We know that we are the ones who are divided and we are the ones who must come back together to walk in the sacred way, Ojibwa prayer. The practice of unity. I am a lover of humanity. I seek common ground. I appreciate differences. I resolve conflict peacefully. I honor the value of each individual. I am a unifier. I am thankful for the gifts of unity. It makes me an instrument of peace. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for your lovely reading. I appreciate that. So I think that gives us a focus, friends, uh, and brings us back to you know, this, this concept of unity. Um, and now that we have that collective understanding and as a help to understand together, um, the following collection of slides has sacred writings from many religions and traditions around the world uh, that speak about unity, peace, justice, oneness, those universal qualities um, or principles that we all hold as true. What I'm going to, Sarah is going to help, we're going to uh, move from slide to slide. Um, and I just would like someone to read aloud, uh, volunteer to read aloud each slide. So if someone would um, do us the honor of um, reading this slide, please. Anyway. I can read the first one. Thanks, Sherry. Sacred writings on unity. We are one. First Nations. We are part of the earth and it is part of us. All things are connected like the blood which unites one's family. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, next. Just hang on. Thank you. Um, I... Thank you. Judaism. Behold how goodly and pleasant it is for all brethren to dwell together in unity. Thank you, Harold. Hinduism. If we live in our oneness heart, we will feel the essence of all religions, which is the love of God. Buddhism, through true, honest, deeply belief that all sentient beings are one, that all beings have the same true nature, virtues, wisdom. Thank you, Kathy. Christianity. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. I can read this one, Islam, and hold fast to the rope of God all together and be not divided. Um, Sikhism, there is only one breath, all are made of the same clay, the light within all is the same. The one light pervades all the many and various beings. There we go. Baha'i, acceptance of the oneness of mankind is the first fundamental prerequisite for reorganization and administration of the world as one country, the home of humankind. Thank you, everyone. I, I think it's quite interesting that just like the golden rule runs through all the, the tr spiritual traditions of the world, in our world, the same for these particular spiritual principles of oneness, unity, um, justice, peacefulness, it's very edifying for me to, to, to bring these forward and, and be able to see them. So thank you to the readers. I'm now going to um, turn the next slide over to Farah, which will open up the sharing uh, circle for us and she will uh, lead us or guide us in this sharing circle. Thank you very much to my readers. Thank you, dear Dolores and everyone. So, um, 
sharing circle. Uh, it says that the primary question to be resolved is how the present world with its entrenched pattern of conflict can change to a world in which harmony and cooperation will prevail. This is from the promise of world peace. So the question is, how do we create unity, harmony and cooperation when differences exist or exists, I have to say. So we are going to go uh, soon on gallery view so we can see each other when we share. Just, um, I'm going to start my sharing. I will go first and then um, we can follow each other. So in order really to create unity in, our, in ourselves, in our families, in our workplaces, in our community, and really in our institutions and community at large, we need skills, we need abilities, we need to have certain kind of attitudes so we can become capable to contribute, contribute in building environments that are conducive to unity. And really, we are in need of new habits in this age of transition. There are beautiful analogies that have been used. And one of them is really, we are right now, it's like, you know, humanity is giving birth and it's in pain. And we are at the threshold of this maturity. We are at the threshold of this baby being born. And um, so here with really humble posture of learning, we are to learn from each other. So I'm going to unmute. And the question is, how do we create unity? Sarah, do you, want, do you want to do the guidelines? Um, yes, thank you for reminding me. Okay, yeah. What do I do without you, Dolores? That's okay. I think this, this next slide will be useful before we, we do share. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Um, so when we are sharing, with really every meeting, there are some guidelines, there are some boundaries, there are some intentions, whatever you may call it. And here, we have the ART, the art, assertiveness with tact. So that means we will make simple positive requests if need be. Respect here in this space is treating each other with dignity and being deeply present. No advising, interrupting, criticizing, or judging. None of this will happen, but it's nice to have our intentions clear. So trust, being worthy of trust, keep confidentiality. Since um, sometimes in this group, people share things that they don't want to share somewhere else. So it's belong to this group and it's, the stories belong to the person who shares it. Unless we have their permission, we will not share it with others. So thanks Dolores for reminding that me that uh, about that and with that, I repeat the question one more time. So for creating unity and harmony and cooperation, how do we do that? So we need everybody to really bring their um, contribution to the table so we can learn from each other. And you. you need to unmute and just um, practice moderation so we can hopefully all share. Yeah. Thank you. Who is the courageous soul who wants to have <laughs> courage to go first? That's true. We need to hear from everyone. Please unmute and go. Okay. Oh, um, courage. So cur Oops, sorry. Oh, you go. No, I'll wait. You go first. Courage wasn't one of my inner qualities. So, um, but I look at the list and I think 
I can't, I don't, I, I don't know that I can develop skills that will make a community perhaps help my family, but I can't go beyond that to uh, develop unity within a community. What I can do is live my life in a unified fashion. I can do the things that we've all been talking about. And if in some way that influences people around me, then that I will, that will be my part in, in that whole exercise. That's my comment. That's lovely. Thank you, Dorothy, for your courage in going first. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so you can unmute and go to the next one. Well, I have a, a pre-Baha'i answer and a post-Baha'i answer. Um, but, uh, you know, I did a lot of interfaith work before I was a Baha'i. And I remember doing, I did a lot of ob observing how do different interfaith groups work together? What do they do? And I came up with sort of six categories. They educate each other. That's one thing they do. Uh, they dialogue about differences and common ground. They, get, they try to spend social time together or fellowshipping. They try to uh, do common projects of justice and peace. I call that solidarity. They do devotions together. And then the last thing I put was unity. And I remember not knowing quite what that meant. But I, my, my pre-Baha'i idea was that eventually if you do enough of these things together, you'll start to feel like you know, you're, 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 one, you're part of humanity. And you'll, for, you'll start to forget your own individual cultural or religious identity, and you'll, you'll feel part of the larger family. That was my idea before. Since I'm a Baha'i, I would quickly just add, the unity is sort of a community building process. If you do a lot of things together, like common projects, study together, pray together, worship together, learn about each other, if you do it over a long haul, you're creating a whole new culture that's... Uh, unity bound in the world. Anyway, enough for now. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, dear Harold, for your share and for really all wealth of experience. I know you have been giving workshops everywhere and I have been following since pre, <laughs> pre and post. So there, <laughs> thank you. Um, next person. You know, I was going to, you know, say that that I think first of all there has to be a uh, a sense that we that unity is desirable, <laughs> and um, you know I think that the world now is awakening to the fact that we can't continue to live in our silos and just you know really protect our differences. Um, or, or when I, I don't mean differences in a, in a positive way, but I mean sort of in our um, our, ex, our exclusivity, let's say that we um, um, that we we are learning that the world can't progress unless we achieve some kind of unity. There's an awakening consciousness to that. So you know, I think that there, there could be the first step is to um, engage in conversations, make spaces for dialogue. And, uh, and maybe even before that, you know, the spaces, we need to know what we're talking about. You know, so I think we, we ourselves need to educate ourselves, you know, become knowledgeable and aware of what's going on in the world. Um, and then, you know, then, then begin to engage in conversations. And I love that, you know, your art, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the um, what did you call it? The, the art of um, boundaries, the guidelines. For, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and that, so, you know, these, these wonderful guidelines help us maintain that kind of humble posture of learning. We don't go into the dialogue with the answers, <laughs> you know, we go in to the di into these, you know, spaces for dialogue with, you know, looking for that common, I think as, as Harold was you're really referring to, is we looking for growth, looking for your own consciousness to expand. And, um, you know, just even the recognition of understanding that we don't know what unity looks like. 
we have a, a little idea in our head, but the, every step we take towards trying to understand it, a whole new vista opens up to us. So anyway, I'll stop talking. There's, I could talk forever on unity, but I, you know, just that, that first, I think that the first step is dialogue. Thank you there, Connie. Uh, I see your wisdom that going into it with more questions than answers, really, there's the asking questions and try to understand. That's, I see that. You so your wisdom is appreciated. Whoever wants to go next, please so do so. I made oh, oh go so, ahead, Susan. No, okay, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Sherry. Um, well, when you had your Unity cards out um, and were reading, what stood out to me um, was I appreciate differences, and that's sort of something I've been working on, and I'm learning slowly as I sometimes tend to do. But I had an opportunity about a year and a half ago to go to um, the Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi and spend a little bit of time in Dubai. And I loved, I loved being there with the Muslim people. And I loved um, watching their commitment to their faith. Just things in the mall, you know, five times a day, the prayers came over the loudspeaker. And, you know, just they're very, we're so conservative, but it was just, so refreshing to be there and 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 it was so different than what I ever could imagine it would be like and so um, I think um, you know just learning a little bit and um, you know can go a long way and just appreciating that and that's something that I'll always you know um, always really love and then I another thing that I was going to say is I think service serving with others and uh, doing projects and service projects and things like that you know, is, is um, a great opportunity to get to know each other and, and um, yeah, and just feel each other's love and that. And I appreciate being able to be here at this workshop. Thank you, Thank you Susan. I'd like to acknowledge you for your really respect and love for other cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'll go next. Um, yes. Yeah, what Susan said about service, when you, when you serve one another and serve beside one another, I think you have an opportunity to get to know people and to know someone is to love them. Have you ever heard that expression? <laughs> and and <laughs> so that's that's an important thing. Um, but when that card was up, I, I made some notes and and uh, so I have four three points that I quickly jotted down. Um, I think Connie hit on something. I think we have to develop our communication skills better um, instead of using loud militant aggressive language which creates chaos and and people go into a defensive position and become entrenched in their positions um that's what's creating the uh, controversy and upheavals and war around the world uh people have started to take on an adversarial attitude which is not helpful um so I, i'm sure some of you are going to recognize this quote seek first to understand and then be understood <laughs> Stephen, <laughs> Stephen R. Covey. Um, I think that is a skill that a lot of people don't have. And so at every opportunity I have, I share that. <laughs> um, I think it makes us better listeners. And um, when we get to the point of being able to reword what we heard, then there's an understanding that you have been heard and people are less defensive because they know they've been heard. Mm -hmm. um, I also, when you, you dialogue, uh, this is a thought I had, expect to hear both commonality and differences for we are each unique and therefore we have unique perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I also wrote down, include God in decisions since God wants us to foster unity and harmony. Mm -hmm. Like how many, how often do we to spend time uh, meditating and in prayers to bring God into our understanding and into our communications and into the way we, we deal with other people that may not be as harmonious or seeking unity. And then I put down forgiveness, which is an attribute. Um, some people, um, I, I noticed none of, I don't think anyone listed that as their greatest attribute, <laughs> but it's probably the one that we should all seek mm. um, to be able to forgive, forgive one another, allow people to have shortcomings and all are, and, it, you know, if we if we go into things believing we're going to need forgiveness 
in our back pocket <laughs> as we deal with other people, we'll do deal much better because yeah. this allows shortcomings in others and they can allow for shortcomings in us. Mm. All are on a spiritual path, some at the beginning and some further along. Mm -hmm. Those were my thoughts. Well done. Thank you. So thank yeah. you, dear Shay. And I, I like to acknowledge you for your really discernment and <laughs> orderliness, putting all those points there. And also thank you for sharing, I know it's in the chat box, um, a passage from Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that we really did not, we could not in an hour and so many minutes include everyone. So it wasn't by omission. It was just that oh, yeah. we just put a few slides there together just to be inclusive. And at the same time, really, pay homage to the spirit of mm -hmm. interfaith. You know, this is an interfaith group. So just yes. want to clarify that. I just wanted to share something else to add to the, the goings on tonight. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Anyone else, please? Well, everybody's spoken so eloquently and given, a, given away a lot of uh, the thoughts I had, but um, I agree with everybody about the idea of just discussion, just being involved in discussion where you really listen to each per person's perspective and look to expand. So always going in with the view that um, with an ex expansive mindset. Um, and I also, one thing all of these um, interreligious events have taught me is just to never stereotype um, always realize how complex each person's journey is and each person's individual life is. Um, and, and that just, I, I just always um, so, um, I just the complexity of each individual. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to add. Thank you, dear. My internet's been going in and out. I think so. so maybe this was already said and I missed it. Um, uh, but two things I think are really necessary. One is curiosity about the other person or the other group, then we're not in that kind of open space of listening. And then with curiosity, we can kind of take things lightly and really hear people where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing I think is a kind of trust. So I noticed, uh, I mentioned I teach compassionate listening. And so a lot of us been do a lot of social justice work and um, there's, we, we discuss a lot how there's a lot of fear in different communities. And when people are in a fearful kind of headspace, often rightly so, uh, then there's, uh, they're not able to be curious or really like hear other people's perspectives. So the more we can try to generate trust uh, and kind of work through some of that fear and help make spaces available so people can listen without being in a fearful space, the more we can get to a place of harmony, I think. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and thank you for letting us know about your computer, um, the internet. Um, and definitely trust is an important aspect, something that um, I see in you as you are speaking. <laughs> want to acknowledge you for that. Has everyone shared? Uh, Jennifer. I have one at other attribute, if I can just add a, a quick Please. note. Um, it sort of goes in line with what Kathy just spoke about, but humility. Humility, um, in our faith, we equate it with being teachable. And you'll never know when you're humble, because the moment you think you're humble, you're not. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Sherry, no, some of these that's attributes, there are 350 50 of them, which the, the cards, the 100 cards of different ones. Humility is one of them. But we have growth virtues and we have strength virtues in ourselves, right? So humility perhaps might not be my, let's say my strength virtue. So I'd be working very hard towards my- Sarah, you're kind of breaking up, sorry. Okay. So I was just mentioning that really we have some virtues are invitation to us, others are confirmation. So some we need to grow in, some mm -hmm. we have it strong in us. 
And so mm -hmm. I guess recognizing, as Dorothy said, in ourselves to, to develop those that are not well developed is very important, Sherry. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. And Jennifer from White Talk, did you share? I'm going to pass, thank you. Okay. I'm enjoying listening. Good, good. So I wonder, Dolores, you haven't shared. Well, I was going to sort of bring, uh, I, well, someone said there are so many wonderful things that were already said. I'm not sure what more I could add to it. But I, I do love the, the quality of trust, um, being trustworthy and being worthy of trust of others, I think is, is a really important um, uh, attribute. And um, to also have that uh, humble posture of, of learning, uh, to be that curious person that you feel that you can learn anything and continue to learn from others. Um, and so I just wanna add those two. Those two resonated with me. Um, and thank you for allowing me to share that. Thank you. I don't know how much time you want to spend on this. Oh, Connie wants to say something. I'd like to say a little bit more, but Connie, first, go ahead. Um, we have more opportunity. We are going to move along. So okay. So if yeah. you have already okay. shared, yeah. Yeah. so much, honestly, so much like about to be said about this subject. And mm -hmm. to honor everybody's time and finish on time, we have a few more slides and we mm -hmm. have another space that you can share. Yeah. So yeah, we, we hope to finish at 8.30 on, on time. So my apologies. Um, so we are going to the next slide and thank you everyone for sharing. Mm -hmm. And yours truly has to share screen again. Here we go. And there we go. So I, I, next no. one. Next. Uh, uh, let's see, we want to get to consultation. Yeah. So what's interesting, I was writing, you know, uh, why I wasn't uh, maybe contributing so much. I was writing everybody's wonderful uh, sharings down. And it's just amazing. Uh, just to recap, um, some of the, the ways forward towards unity is through fellowship, through service. I love the very first person's uh, thought about living their life in a unified fashion, community building. Those are all I could go on and on. I was writing every time you said something to be trustworthy, to have trust in others, to be curious. But what was interesting is that I, I um, heard uh, many times about dialogue and communication. I thought that was quite interesting that that in fact was um, out of all of them came up three or four or five times. So, you know, asking the question, what are the ways forward that we can walk this path together towards unity? What are the tools? What are the practical ways that we can, we can um, do this together? And so, uh, you know, out of the interest of time, Farah and I decided that we would, you know, explore further this idea of consultation, which um, I will expand upon, you know, after we actually read the quote together. I'll explain a little bit more about consultation and, and, um, and it's deeper understanding that maybe what, you know, what the actual word might mean to you. So if someone would uh, volunteer, please to read our quote, and then I will expand a bit on uh, consultation. A brave soul, please. <laughs> yes, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Jesse. Last states. Consultation bestows greater awareness and transmutes conjecture into certitude. It is a shining light, which in a dark world leads the way and guides. For everything there is and will continue to be a station of perfection and maturity. The maturity of the gift of understanding is made manifest through consultation. So thank you, Kathy. So just to expand a little bit on what uh, the concept of consultation and how it uh, is, uh, brings about dialogue and communication. It's a skill and it's one of the many moral uh, capabilities or habits of mind that I think we were talking about that we really need to walk this path together. Um, consultation has certain virtues and attitudes inherent in it and is useful really at all levels of society. It's not just a way to discuss a thing, but it's a way to interact in a respectful, uh, dignified, 
humble yet proactive way to get to the truth of something. And really what the concept of um, consultation can allow is a collective investigation into reality um, whose purpose centers on achieving um, clarity and truth. So we felt that this would be one important tool that that could be useful in, in terms of dialogue and communication and so on. But what's interesting here is one facet has been brought out in this quote, and that's the gift of understanding. So we're going to uh, go to the next slide with the help of, of my coworker, Farah, and deeply or to try to collectively understand this virtue of understanding. So um, here we have the virtues card again, and if we can read, um, Farah is going to lead this slide. What does consultation bring? One aspect of it brings understanding. So Farah. Thank you, Dr. Lars. I'm much appreciated. Definitely, as you mentioned, consultation is one tool. Um, so what is really understanding? Perhaps this is only a lot of you mentioned different inner qualities, different attributes we need, different skills we need, different abilities we need. This is just one again. So this is where we can share. So after we read these friends, we are going to reflect on it and share what is in here that resonates with us, that speaks to us. Mm -hmm. And um, how really understanding might relate to uh, creating uh in spaces we share unified spaces that we want to create so as we read the rest of us listen with compassionate curiosity and that's something i'm practicing to learn so uh, we need a volunteer to read both sides of the card of understanding for us i'll read it understanding is having cl clear insight into ideas and feelings. We thoughtfully seek to comprehend the full truth. We are mindful of what is most important. We are deeply present to others with compassion and accuracy, helping them to discern their own clarity. We go the extra mile to put ourselves in another's shoes in order to forgive. We treasure knowledge and use our minds as tools to explore what is real and true. We cherish the ability to see the whole picture. And then under the practice, if one is master of one thing and understands one thing well, one has at the same time insight into and understanding of many things. Vincent van Gogh, the practice of understanding. I reflect on the meaning of ideas. I have empathy for others' feelings. I am mindful of meaning. I am a discerning listener. I call on empathy in order to forgive. I value knowledge and perceptiveness. I am thankful for the gift of understanding. It enlightens my viewpoint. Thank you, dear Harold, for your service of reading to us. So <laughs> friends, we have um, 20 minutes or so, and we have one more slide, then again, it's a sh that we get to share with each other uh, more. So please unmute and keep the principles of, principle of moderation in mind. And just, I guess, remember we, all of us have something to say which is valuable. We all want to be seen, we want to be heard, and we want to be valued. So with that, please unmute. Hopefully we hear from everyone. Harold, you said you had something to share. Would you like to go first? That was on the previous topic. We're now on something else. Oh, so. you can't relate it to this. Well, I'll say something about consultation. Yes, uh, please. It, to me, it's a way of discerning truth mm -hmm. in a group process and using guidelines and scriptures 
and principles. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it's also decision making. Yeah. So it's not just figuring out the truth. It's it's acting together. Mm -hmm. And that's another that's a that's very difficult. Uh, so unity, I think, requires consultation in the sense of truth discernment, but it also requires cooperation mm -hmm. and decision making. Yeah. And consultation helps with both of those. And each of those processes are very complex. So consultation is much bigger than I realized before I started uh, reading it about it and doing it from a Baha'i perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Errol. Yeah, it is. I think consultation, um, you know, when people are heard you're, and you have to come to some sort of conclusion or resolution, if people have have been heard, um, th you're more likely to build consensus. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to get something done, when you build consensus, everybody buys into the resolution. You move forward much quicker on whatever the task is, what or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, Sherry, I want to build on what you said though about bringing God into our understanding when we're dialoguing when we're doing anything in our lives and and certainly when we're together consulting trying to come to a decision whatever it is to discern the truth but by bringing god into our lives that enlightens our you know our understanding i guess you know getting back to understanding it enlightens our understanding as um harold said about you know using the scriptures the word of god to be able to um help us to get to that point so yeah mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, it, it, it's interesting that um, you know we're we're talking about that because I was thinking that uh, you know for uh, for understanding to increase and this has been I think people mentioned this already in talking about um, um, unity and when we enter into consultation we try to increase our understanding it needs to come from that place of love mm -hmm. and um you know that we that that when we are motivated by love then there's always movement there's always movement forward there and um and i think that added to that to that uh, love is that sense of of being you know self-sacrificing and one of the things we teach our children in children's classes is to prefer your you know brother or sister prefer others before yourself to uh, give your your sister your little sister a glass of water first if she's thirsty you know these lovely qualities that that you know Farah you were saying are they're they're within us but we just have to practice them and um we live in a world where uh it's it's all about me it's about my happiness and it's about you know me being fulfilled and my rights and it it will it, it'll take a lot of patience, a lot of kindness, forbearance, um, you know, many more virtues that you know, we could probably list off in order to um, get to that stage, you know, allow people to, to build that quality of other centeredness instead of self centeredness. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, it, and it really does, you know, require an incredible amount of love. And it's it's not just love for people, but it's love for God in in the these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear Connie. Oh, wonderful. Love to hear from everyone. Um, what um, came out to me here was that we cherish the ability to see the whole picture. And I, I like some of the different points there um, by being um, a discerning listener, you know, seek to understand someone um, and where, the, where they're coming from and having empathy as well as having the ability to forgive and, um, and just, you know, being um, aware of people's feelings. Um, I love all those points. They're, they're such beautiful attributes and things that, I certainly need to um, continue to work on. Um, I think um, as you talk about love, people, I mean, there's really that thing, like it's not always what you say to people, it's 
kind of how you make them feel. And so people know if you do care about them because they can feel that. And that's, again, something that I need to continue working on. But yes, that all these points are, they're just beautiful and, and um, really just make the world a better place. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. Can I try to bring Kathy into this? Yes. I think I can get Kathy involved. Very Kathy, sweet. you know, co consultation doesn't work unless the ego is really uh, in check. And I, I know you're a Buddhist and I know you're interested in compassionate listening, which you have to, to do that. And I believe you're very good at it. You have to, your ego has to be mighty small to do that. Consultation, what trips it up is that people are invested in their own ideas, their own projects, their own beliefs, the, their own sense of the, the proper outcome. So I, I know that you have a lot of wisdom about the, the keeping the ego out of the uh, conversation and like you worked in the Middle East where, where tempers are flaring. Oh my goodness. Anyway, how, how do you keep your ego out of your consultation and listening and, and project uh, cooperation? Yeah, no, thank you so much. Well, and well done. You got me into the conversation. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, um, I think in that way, it's caring about something more than yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So for me, like peacemaking, you know, wanting to create unity, wanting to stop violence, wanting to build relationships uh, is more important than my ego uh, in that way. You know, certainly I, I have, I have lots of problems like all of us, uh, but it's, you know, there's something that's more important than just my own side. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found is if you can really love the other person, like I think it was Connie earlier saying about love, uh, like there are folks um, who I do, who I disagree with on everything imaginable, uh, but I really love them because uh, I really care about them as people. If you build relationships, if you start small and you build relationships, and then the longer you can maintain relationships, the more you understand where someone's coming from. Uh, even if they're continue to do things that you strongly disagree with. Uh, so I think, but having that kind of commitment to them and caring about something more than just whatever yourself is, I think is really helpful, whether that's God or something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good, thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Harold, both of you for <laughs> collaborating here together. So anyone else? We, we like to hear from everyone. Everybody has something to say. <laughs> and I, I was going to say, too, that that whole idea of listening with receptive silence. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about that listening aspect already, but just um, furthering our understanding by really, really holding that space for other people and their opinions and views and their life experience. Um, and as, as Kathy says, you don't have to have the exact same perspectives to really understand where somebody else is coming from. And the mutual respect for each other is more important than, than having a difference of opinion on an issue or a, an idea or a different religion or a different thought. So yeah. Always learning, always have it going in with the idea of learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jennifer. Anybody else? We, we have time, so love to hear people's ideas because that's how we really learn from each other. And really, these cards, these virtuous cards, are also a tool something to help us understand things much better, you know? Um, if I can share again, I was just thinking of that quote uh, in the, that you shared about consultation. Um, and I may have that not remember it right, but that the, the part about how um, the, uh, Oh, here it is. Well, thank you. The maturity of the gift of understanding is made manifest through consultation. I, I was just thinking, so we have, so we have that virtue of understanding and its maturity, 
its maturity is brought out by consultation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it, that's pretty profound. I mean, we can't understand unless we engage in consultation. Mm -hmm. And then there are like, you know, and I think what we're doing is we are actually practicing, yeah. uh, you know, the art of consultation tonight. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, there to me that, Okay, so that maturity of the gift of understanding, you know, this is a, if it's a, if it's a virtue, you know, usually virtues are really, really hard to mine. You know, mm -hmm. their, their patience is not an easy virtue to mine. Mm -hmm. Either is, you know, there are so many forbearance, you know, all of these things that are really important for us to, uh, for our, to us to bring out. And um, so therefore, understanding is going to be very difficult for us to, to bring about. And so it was going to take some effort and striving to engage in this dialogue, yeah. to engage in consultation. You know, I mean, I can go into a, into a consultation and, you know, into a, you know, a space where there's consultation and trying to come up with it. And, and I think that I'm going in with humility and all of this type of thing. And the next thing you know, I'm, I, I take offense. Somebody <laughs> says something that offends me. It just happens like that. You know, it is so easy because, you know, what takes offense but our ego? You know, yeah. Kathy was mentioning, you know, you know, that our spirit, our spiritual side, you know, the, who we truly, truly are doesn't take offense, loves, is compassionate, is forgiving, you know, all of these things. So, you know, I think that, so here we go. I mean, perhaps I'm just saying this is that we need a lot of practice and whatever we can do, all of us in whatever, anything that we can do, we need to practice consultation with our kids, with our spouses, you know, with our neighbors, with, you know, with the, our friends and really be conscious about it. And, um, and I think that uh, even uh, in insignificant things, I think that will increase our understanding. And then getting back to the Vincent van Gogh's thing, he says, if we're good in one thing, insight and understanding effect is effect of, is gained in all things. I, I, I love that uh, quote by Vincent van Gogh. So anyway, a little thoughts from me. <laughs> Thank you. So there's a, there are a few people who haven't spoken. Uh, that'd be great to hear from you too, if you would like to share. Okay. Um, we have one more slide and that's our last slide. And um, dear Dolores, is there anything you want to add here? No, I think it's just been wonderful. I've been excited and, and just, this has been a wonderful workshop. I mean, we haven't ended it yet, but I just want to say it's wonderful. And my, my husband, who's walking around doing multitasking, just messaged me, said, this is great stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, I think this, uh, this has been great. So we'll continue to, to move on. I just wanted to mention though, what Connie said to build on it is this, uh, and I'm sure Kathy will, uh, say the same thing but to be to have that mindfulness to be very mindful at every instance that we can practice these wonderful virtues one one of the tools is consultation but we've talked about so many virtues that we can practice but to be mindful of these at any given moment at any time or in any circumstance at all levels where we interact with people in big and small groups so yeah that's, that's my bit. <laughs> so thank you. Not, may I jump in? I'm sorry. Please. Um, sure. It's really hard for me to uh, go any further than what's already been said. I'm thinking about understanding. There's a lot to do with the physical presence of another person as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you don't get that on the telephone, but mm -hmm. you need to pretend that you're there <laughs> if you can't. Um, but I think that's really important. We physically need to be watching people and uh, mm. connecting with our eyes in loving, as you've talked already, 
loving, caring ways and letting people know that we really do want to understand. We really do want to be brothers and sisters, if you will, on this whole planet. And, and I think, as I said, again, I think physical contact is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear Kathy. Yeah, Dorothy, for adding that dimension to, to the sharing of everyone. Definitely physical presence. And I see Mr. Mutard, Ed Mutard joining us. So welcome, Ed. Love yeah. to have you here with us. It's nice to see all of you. I noticed by just looking at the screen that it seems to be a question that mostly it's women who are interested in it because there's what, two men now? <laughs> yeah. <Or> three. <laughs> Three men. Uh, this is a, to me, it's, a, it's always an interesting observation that, that this happens over and over again in my own life. And I, I'm sorry I had to depart there for a while. But I, I, I wanted to come back to see if you're still talking, but I wondered if there's been any discussion on trying to find a, a common understanding of what we human mortals think that God is. Uh, yes. um, you know, th this to me is the, the point, pretty close to the point of, of divine unity. What do you think God is? And is he, um, is he one? Okay, that's one question. What, what uh, if he's one, what is he like? How does, what's he, what's he up to? <laughs> Why am I here? And um, I, I got to thinking that, okay, I'm going to call my God. And I'm going to say it's your same as your God, I believe, but you can take it or leave that one. What, what does he do? Uh, Ed, we have only eight minutes before we are finished. Right. Eight minutes. Oh. Mm -hmm. So love to hear your contribution at the very end if people want to hang out a bit. But we are to finish by 8.30 and I see we have six minutes right now. Okay. So, so <laughs> before they shut us down here. So um, really listening to everyone, there's I kind of felt there's a lot of learning, a lot of unlearning, a lot of relearning to do with uh, really different dimensions of getting to unity. And one of the important thing is really to have everyone's voice being heard, mm -hmm. which is very important. So at this moment, really, we want to ask everyone to share a sentence or two since we have six minutes so everyone can share. What was, uh, that's like a feedback for us. What was, um, what is a gift that you're taking with you? What is, um, or any feedback for all of us together? Because we are hoping that if possibility allows us perhaps continue different sessions with unity number three together. So, um, this is yours. Please unmute again and give us feedback. What gift are you taking from tonight? Unmute and jump in and two sentences, one or two sentences. The gift that I'm taking away from this is that there must be many of us out there who love to be together and to work together and to feel one another's compassion and learning. And this is just perfect. This little group is indicative of what there is available for all of us. And I would like to thank you for that. Thank you, dear Dorothy. Yeah. Much appreciated. Please I feel the same. Oh, I just feel hugely inspired that there's a group of people 
that want to meet up and talk about unity and what that means and how to understand others and talk about the virtues, which um, it also reminds me because I did the virtues project with my children. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. And I just feel, I just feel inspired. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, you know, I, I take away uh, a lot of reflection on what I used to call sharing. How do you get people to share? Um, and not everybody is equally comfortable sharing, but we have to learn how to create a process that everyone can enter into um, or make it comfortable to not enter into it. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I, I, I divide things into before I was a Baha'i and after I was a Baha'i. I've been pondering that all my life. The group process, how do you make it inviting to everyone? and maximize the contribution that people can make. Um, on the other hand, not everybody necessarily wants to share verbally, right? So you have to respect that too. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna solve any big problems in the world unless we share uh, better or consult better internationally, interculturally, interreligiously. So this is a nice little exercise in looking at people with various gifts and interests uh, in that process. Thank you for the workshop. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate your wisdom here. <laughs> Once again. Well, well, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like <clears throat> as I've listened to everybody and, and contributed, don't you get the feeling that everybody's thoughts have linked on to one another? Mm -hmm. Like there's a chain that's being built that everybody has has hooked into and added to the chain mm -hmm. and so in that sense i feel like yes we have a room full of people that want to speak about unity but don't you also get the impression that we're preaching to the choir <laughs> this, everybody outside of this room could benefit by what we just shared and and know and uh, you know don't you get that impression it's like like the people that need it most are the ones that are not here <laughs> um but I really feel like everything that has been shared in concept and, and we, we've functioned in, in consultation as I think it was um, Connie uh, that said, and, and it links up, everything connects. There's nothing that was um, shared that's out in left field. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? There's mm -hmm. nothing really out there in the field. It, it, it's, it's connected. And so I have a, a greater appreciation for commonality. Mm. and where our hearts are and the desire to be unified because any spiritual journey or any change starts with the desire for it mm -hmm. and i think that's what i've seen in everybody in this room oh. so true thank you sherry. sherry who wants to go and tell us about their feedback well, I'll, I'll go. Um, I'm just, I'll keep it short. You know, I think that what you, what I have experienced here is a sweet atmosphere. It's, it was just the sweetness of it. Um, I think that uh, the atmosphere that you created has made me feel comfortable for sharing, you know, as, as Harold was saying, you know, we, how do we do this? I think you've done a wonderful job of that. And thank you so much for creating this. I can't think of another word, but how sweet it is. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, it really is very sweet to be here. Um, I have, um, our souls yearn for a space like this. And I anticipate your, you know, that these if, you know, unity to three, unity four, the questions and the conversation will get more difficult, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And, um, and, and they will challenge us. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think this is an important step of creating that sweetness. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. And and I think somebody alluded that really it takes time, perhaps even centuries before we become <laughs> member of one human family, but mm -hmm. really taking the steps and creating that positive um, energy and mm -hmm. taking steps in words, actions, 
thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, so thank you for that. So we need to hear from some more. I just wanted to add that to what Tanya mentioned. Kathy, I'd love to hear more from you. Oh, I think Susan was going to say something. I want oh, to hear Susan. Susan. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. I, I, you know, when you, when, um, kind of what Sherry was saying, you know, there's just all the, all the points were so good and, and there was nothing out on left field. And, and, um, but when I look at these, you know, all the points um, that were made, you know, being discerner, listener, um, discerning listener, empathy, forgiveness, those aren't always just things for me to make, you know, to help make the world a better place, but it can start, you know, with me and myself, with my kids, grandkids, family, um, my relationships with friends, which I guess is a start to make the world a better place. It's, it's my small start. Um, and those are just things, goals that I can work on um, just to, to have better relationships. And um, yeah, so I thank you for that. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, no, thank you so much for hosting this tonight. I think this was really what I needed personally. Um, I've been doing a lot of work lately with um, Indigenous folks and uh, some social justice stuff, and there are just so many problems uh, to work through that uh, even though my heart uh, yearns for unity, I worry that we can't get there. Uh, so this was really helping buoy me. Uh, so I just found it really hopeful, and I hope there are more going forward. And I do, I love getting together with other folks who are also interested in unity and seeing these common threads, like Sherry was saying, it's just really lovely to see how we've all noticed these in different ways and we can kind of work together and figure out the best way to make this happen. So thank you very much. Thank you, dear Kathy, for sharing. So who else hasn't shared here? Because we love to hear from everyone. It's 833 friends. So I just don't want to forget anyone um, but if you need to leave, please leave. We want to honor your time. Um, and really, we personally, I have to say humbly want to say that um, we all just offer what we have. And there are many people in this space that have a lot of knowledge with interfaith, with creating your unity, with consultation, who I could have probably said more. My sincere apologies or our sincere apologies for just making sure that we all leave this space, honoring everyone's time and hopefully continue this. And Dolores, and um, you need to unmute Harold. Harold, you unmuted. Yeah, I just need to go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Harold. <laughs> Right. Farah, uh, yes. Can we ask someone to have a closing, to give a closing blessing? Sure. If anyone wants to say, a, in fact, I have a passage from a unity prayer that I would like to share. Okay. If you don't mind, since don't want to put anybody in a spot, if anybody wants to leave, uh, it's a prayer from humanity, and I will just share one paragraph from it. O thou kind Lord, unite all. Let the religions agree and make the nations one so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. O God, raise aloft the banner of the oneness of mankind. O God, establish the most great peace. Cement, thou God, the hearts together. This is a prayer from the um, sacred writings of the Baha'i faith. Thank you, Farah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much. Is that the scripture from Baha'i called the sacred writings from the Baha'i? Actually, this is from a Baha'i prayer book. And the prayer is, if you type Baha'i prayers, prayer for humanity, just Google it, prayer for humanity. 
And I think that might be the first or second prayer to come uh, to show up. So Baha'i prayers, prayer for humanity. Excellent. Thank you so much for this night. Thank you so much, Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Ed, Thank you. Ed, Ed, do you want to say something? No. You need to mute, unmute, Ed. Okay. So. Good night, everybody. Good night, Sherry. Thank you so much for your contributions. I'm happy you're, you're here with us today, tonight. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Sarah, sure. if you could stay on for a few minutes and we can chat. Sure, sure. Um, Ed, can you hear us? We can hear you. Ask to unmute. <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, okay yeah. great. Thank you for joining. But uh, it, we had to kind of move along because we were reaching the end. Yeah. yeah. We, so those are good questions, though. We can explore them at, at future points. Yeah, exactly. Good questions. Exactly. We were given Ed from eight, uh, from seven to eight thirty. Yeah, and uh, we had we had I think thirteen people there. Yeah. yeah so, good. Ed, you joined us a little bit later. Okay. Eight minutes to the end, you join us. Eight minutes to the end. So love to hear from you more next time. Oh yeah. Thank you, Ed. Take care. Thanks for joining. Hello. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>